Welcome everybody to another BDA film analysis. In this episode we continue to look at Joseph Parker as we analyze his weaknesses and his strengths that we have seen throughout his biggest wins. In this episode we're going to take on or focus on rather the Carlos Takam fight. Carlos Takam, very tricky, wily veteran with good defense. Now before we begin this guys I want to remind you to please go on over to BDA Live which is our secondary channel, and subscribe to that one. That's where we're going to be holding the live podcast from now on. Now, people are wondering, why are we moving content over there? Well, our attorneys have advised us to diversify our portfolio. So now we're moving content across various different channels just in case. And I don't argue with the good people over at Rothstein and Associates. So we're going to take their advice. We're going to heed to their knowledge. And uh, we're just going to be moving there. So please go on over to BDA Live and subscribe. Okay, now let's get on with Joseph Parker versus Carlos de Cam and analyze some of the strengths and some of the weaknesses that Parker displayed in that fight. All right, so let's begin with one of Parker's better abilities. It's his defense. Now we're gonna take a look at it. It's, it's pretty inconsistent. It can be inconsistent, but when he uses it well, man, he knows how to mix in those reflexes and that rubber band upper body of his to good use. So here you see him again, like against Andy Ruiz. He knows how to roll with the right hands. Look at that. Good reflexes. He's always watching his opponent. And this reminds me a lot of, like, you know when your girlfriend gets mad at you because you forgot your anniversary or whatever and she tries to hit you? Ah, ah, you forgot our anniversary. Yeah, and you just push her. You're like, all right, that's enough out of you. But anyway, so you see that was brought up because of Parker's great defense. He made the cam mister a whole bunch of times. And because, of course, he's a taller guy, you know, he was just pushing him away with his arms. But however, keep in mind that the cam actually had the longer arms in this one. So Parker knows what he's doing on the inside a little bit there. You know, if he gets tired, he knows how to tie up or how to use his arms to push his opponent away. Here you see him continuing to roll with the punches and he circle away. There he circles away as well. Again, very good reflexes. And then he gets close and smothers the cam's ability to punch. Look at this, just pulls back enough to make that right hand miss. They're blocking the left hooks, displaying good reflexes, putting that hand up, although as we're going to see later on, doesn't, you, doesn't do it most of the time. There I didn't like that, see how he squared up a little bit, but he was able to circle away. Alright, now let's take a look at his offense. And again, I'm going a little quicker this time because we've, you know, look at his previous videos. He's doing almost the same thing always, you know, hooking off the jab, Throwing one twos and low hooks to the body, but this is where his this is really his ace in the hole here. His hand speed, he's gonna have to flash that against Anthony Joshua. And see how he goes to the body. Double left hooks, starts up there. He goes to the body with a right hook. He's gonna have to do this against Anthony Joshua. And as we saw in the previous video, where I compared how Parker goes to the body and how Dylan White went to the body against. Anthony and Joshua and Anthony and Joshua was getting doubled over a little bit by those body shots. So going to the body, even against a huge guy like Anthony and Joshua, it can help. And here we're seeing Parker doing that. Now look at how he dug that left hook to the body. He was really trying, oof, right on the plexus, really trying to punch through the target. Here again. But he just has to do more of that. There he's trying to get away. Then, oof, another left hook. See how he doubled the cam over there a little bit? Oof. And that. See it in slow motion again. See, right hand. Pivots. While the cam is. See how the cam is just moving forward with his hands up. But meanwhile, the, uh, Parker already changed angles and digs in a beautiful uppercut to the body. That's the other thing. He has to flash these angles. Oh, look at that. Left hook, left uppercut. We exchange right hands. Gets out of the corner with left uppercut. Jabbing. See, that's he needs to flash that jab as well. He's very relaxed on the inside. Very loose. Again, changes angles. Look at that. Slow motion, guys. This time. He gets his right hand free. Uses it to push the cam out uh, uh, forward as he's changing angles and then digs in another body shot he's gonna have to do this because like precise puncher mentioned in one of our podcasts 
Joshua has very heavy legs. He's almost like Robocop. That's how I think that's how precise described Anthony Joshua. He's like I said in another video, he's pretty quick, Joshua, for his for his weight, but he does have trouble turning a little bit. And you you know it's gonna be interesting to see if Parker can do this, do a lot of this. Just get on the when they're on the inside, move, change angles, keep the bigger man turning. That's guerrilla warfare for you. You have the larger force, which is Joshua. He has bigger weapons, you know, bigger artillery, but you're the quicker guy, so use that to your advantage and keep him moving like there. Oh, I had the slow motion. I didn't know why I had to. All right. There you see your right hand and he keeps circling. Uppercuts. Now again, he can't stay there on the inside like against Anthony Joshua all the time because Joshua might wear him down with his bigger strength. But uh, if he is going to stay on the inside, flash the hand speed, get away, turn. Look at that, another left hook to the body. And then he circles away. Try to go to the body there again and then he comes back, back with a combination. Good reflexes. And then circles away. Oh, he's, uh, pushes him away. All right. He, he's not going to be able to push Joshua with all that much, but. And then here we see him flashing more hand speed here. Punch. Oh, and by the way, look at how this all started. Again, the angles. Parker, see, he's almost like trying to shove to come away. But then look at his rear leg. Little subtle change of angles. Repositions himself. See how he pivots there a little bit? It is a pivot, slight pivot, because he's already close. He changed angles. Let's look at that back again, all right? So he changes, moves forward with the leg, and then repositions himself. Boom, see that? A little turn. And I look at the angle here. Look at the cam. He can't really punch from here. I mean, he can throw the right uppercut if he wants to, but it's not going to have as much pop as Parker's shots have. And Parker is in a perfect position to unload there. And he mixes in uppercuts, hooks, straight punches from all angles he punched himself out a little bit here got a little too crazy but i mean we're, look at the look at the hand speed that's what he's gonna have to do against joshua and then again here see that hand speed a very good hand speed for a six foot four 200 and something pound guy look at that double left hooks upstairs and here again another no we don't see the changing of angles But the bad here is, like with Andy Ruiz, we see Parker getting hit with a lot of jabs. Again, the cam has the biggest, bigger reach, the longer reach, but this is a taller guy. He should be able to keep the distance better. Now, again, he didn't get hit with jabs all night, but Anthony Joshua was a pretty good jab. So it's going to be important to really keep his hands up. I think Parker's is mistake, and I've mentioned this before, I think he... He's overconfident because of his good reflexes. And uh, he doesn't really block jabs all that well. Here another thing that I don't like is how he smothers his own work. See how he gets too close there? And his chin is right up. Boom, he gets hit. Again, see here, he got too close, off balance. Again, here's... See that? He, he doesn't know how to gauge the distance all that much. Or all that well. See? What's he gonna do here? His chin is up in the air. There he got out quickly enough, so nothing came back from the cam. But look at his chin right up. And his hand is late to get back into position. Again, too close. Here we're going to take a look at him taking too many over right hands from the cam and left hooks as well. He came back with a good right uppercut though there. Parker did. But he still gets hit too much with overhand rights. Now, the overhand right is working for the cam because he's shorter. So he's making Parker throw that jab, and Parker keeps his left hand low because he tries to roll with the right hands, but they see against the ropes there, got slapped, thank god it wasn't a bigger shot, there he takes the right hand, now he was off balance there, I, I don't think he was hurt because of the right hand, like there, it was, he was more off balance because of that left hook he threw, but he gets hit too many, too much with those overhand rights, and Joshua is going to be throwing uh, right hands from a higher angle. So those, that, either he needs to work on his defense and, and concentration so that he can roll with the right hands or he's going to be getting murdered with the right hands. See here, here, again, relying, over relying on the reflexes. He thinks he's going to be able to lean back from the right hand. And again, this is why trainers tell beginners not to lean back because you this can happen to you. And it looks worse than it really is, the punch. 
And by the way, Takam did a better job than Andy Ruiz, in my opinion, of cutting off the ring and putting pressure. And here's the other thing, catching left hook. See how that right hand of Parker's is too low? Especially after he throws it. See here? Throws the right and lifts it down, chin up. And thank God that left hook didn't land flush on the chin. Again, getting caught with left hooks. Now, the thing is this, he likes to fight with a left hand down because he's looking to roll for the right hand, even though it doesn't work all, all the time, but it works most of the time. Now, if you're going to do that, let's take a look at James Stoney, the best to, one of the best to ever do it. See how he, he this is against Mike McCollum, by the way. So he parries the jab, he's looking for the right hand. He jabs, McCollum throws the right hand to the body and a left, and there James Stoney tried to counter with a look right up but it was too close. But then look at that, he comes back with a left hook and immediately as he's throwing it, he brings his right hand up. Now I know James Stone is one of the best to have ever done it or, or to have fought with that style of, you know, the Philly shell or, you know, just essentially whatever you want to call it, but fighting with the hand down. He needs to keep that right hand pinned. And, you know, like again, some people are saying, well, that's James Stone, one of the best, like the bar is very high if you're comparing him to Parker. But still, Parker, if you're going to fight that way, you have to bring that right hand up. There's no excuse not to bring it up. You get you get you giving away free shots. Again, see here. He weaves under the jab, and then brings the right hand up because he's expecting a left hook. If you're gonna be fighting like that with the hand down, yeah, that right hand better be prepared to be right next to the chin, the phone, like they say, holding the phone to the to the ear. And here we just see. Parker getting hit with some hooks. Now, partly this is because he's tired in these points of the fight. He's taking a little break and he doesn't respect the camp's punch all that much. Okay, first of all, that was a beautiful, again, changing of angles from Parker. See there? Steps to the side and then re regains position as he's pivoting. Beautiful move to escape away from the ropes. And I think he's going to be coming in more sharper against Joshua. He's going to have to. So let's not put on putting too much stock into what we're seeing here against Takam, but nevertheless, we do have to analyze his mistakes, just like we give him credit for his strengths. And hopefully he doesn't... Now this is more, again, partly because, see, nothing's coming back from Parker. He's tired, and he's like, all right, let me just try and roll with this, and, and then regain enough energy to fight with something, but he, he, he looks bad, man. It looks bad, especially since Takam is 30, what? He was 37, 36 at the time. Parker was maybe 24. So the younger guy is ending the fight in a weaker state than the older guy. But anyway, so let's take a look at everything. The good things from Parker are he has good reflexes and agility, that good rubber band upper waist, you know, waist movement that he has, hand speed, that's his ace in the hole. He's got a secret weapon. He has to use that to pop Joshua and get away. And the angles. So you're going to get inside against Joshua. Joshua's going to come back with tight shots. He knows how to fight on the inside. Right uppercuts followed by left hooks and all that jazz. So Parker has to use his hand speed and mobility to move. Punch, punch, punch. Move, punch. Get out of the way. Get away from the inside. Change angles. Everything like that. And tighten up the defense. So now we're going to take a look then at... So those are the keys to victory. And, you know, pop that jab as well. Even if you're not hurting. But use that jab to keep the other guy distracted. Weaknesses, stamina, as we saw against Ruiz and the Cam. Not so much against Huey Fury, but against the Cam and Ruiz more... He tends to fade a little bit. And that's not a good thing if you're going to be fighting a guy like Joshua who's going to be throwing precise punches and he's going to be looking to wear you down with his strength. Poros defense, again, leaky defense from uh, Parker. He, he, Oh, look at that. I misspelled defense. That's nice. I have Poros spelling. Parker has Poros defense. So he needs to tighten that up he, because he has the good reflexes, man. Good reflexes, uh, you know, good upper body movement. He can dodge punches in a way that most people can't in the heavyweight division, but he needs to tighten that up. It's already there. He does it most of the time, that defense. Just, you know, improve on it. And the activity, again, he doesn't throw that many punches. Especially against the cam, you know, it seemed like he was hitting more shots than necessary sometimes. It seemed like it was a close fight and he needed to finish strong and he didn't. Now, let's go back again. See this, all these three things? 
this is the good news. This can all be fixed. Stamina? I, I think that, that what happens with Parker is it seems as if he's not training hard enough in the gym. Now, the reason why I say that is because he's very relaxed in the ring. So I don't think it's stress that's starting him out. I think it's just the fact maybe he's not doing what he's supposed to in the gym. Well, whatever the reason is, he can fix that stamina. The defense, I went, as again, he, he, he has good defense. All he has to do is tighten it up. Be more consistent, focus more during the fight. And the activity, again, if he fixes his stamina, he fixes the activity by proxy. Okay? So, again, things might not be looking good for George, uh, for Parker. He is the underdog. But if he fixes some of the things that we've seen in these past three videos, he can come away with a win. He might not be able to dominate Joshua, but he can eke a win out, maybe. You never know. I mean, what, are we oracles? We know the future? No, we don't. Parker can pull this off if he really steps up to the game. Again, remember Brady's against Uzik. A lot of people thought Uzik was going to walk through. And Brady's didn't look all that hot in his past fights, you know, very dirty fights, a lot of clinching. So what does he do against Uzik? He steps up his game and gave the performance of his life. Parker can do the same thing here. All right. So again, guys, that was another BDA film analysis. That's enough of Joseph Parker for now. We might do more videos on him, but for, for now, we focus on his biggest fights. And again, a lot of good in there, a lot of strengths, and also some weaknesses that he can tweak if he wants to win. Don't forget, guys, to go on over to BDA Live and subscribe in order to be able to listen to the live podcast. Um, also, subscribe to this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe to BDA Regular. Tell us what we got wrong, what we got right. Give us your comments and we're going to see you on the next one. Take care, folks.